Hi, so I created a video on Rust data types. It, the video went kind of long, so I had to cut it into two parts. It's just going to be a split cut. Um, so you can have the first part, then the second part. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. All right, in this video, I'd like to go over the Rust data types. Well, at least according to the Rust programming book that we've been following. So let me open that up. I already have it opened. And open in editor which I already created a new project that's here here and I already have cancel that I already have the file open everything's in working order cargo run see the hello world there we go back here 3.2 data types every value in rust is of a certain data type which tells Rust what kind of data is being specified so it knows how to work with that data. We'll look at two data type subsets, scalar and compound. So you gotta keep in mind that Rust is a statically typed language, which means that it must know the type of all variables at compile time. The compiler can usually infer what type we want to use based on the value and how we use it. In cases when many types are possible, such as when we want to convert a string to a numeric type using parse, like we did in the guessing game, we must add a type annotation, like this. So I'll write that out here. Cancel. What they have is let guess. And here's the type annotation, which is U32, unsigned 32, equal 42.parse.expect, dot dot expect, and then we put a message in here. Message, uh, I think we're good. There we go. Not a number. Number. So yeah, um, this runs. However, if we were to remove the type annotation, this thing right here, and just let it be a let, it's saying that the compiler would yell at us. So let's check that out. And it says cannot infer a type. Consider using guess a type. So adding a type annotation, which we had previously. U32. Okay. Scalar types. A scalar type represents a single value. Rust has four primary scalar types integers, floating point numbers, Booleans, and characters. You may recognize these from other programming languages. Let's jump into how they work in Rust. So we have integers, right? An integer is a number without a fractional component. When we use one integer type in chapter two, that is the U32 type. This type declaration indicates that the value it's associated with should be of an unsigned integer, signed integer start with an I instead of a U, that takes up 32 bits of space. And then there's a table down here to show us the different declarations. So we have signed and unsigned, signed, unsigned, and then we have the different space values. Uh, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and we have arch which is I size and U size. Each variant can either be signed or unsigned and has an explicit size. Signed and unsigned refer to whether it is possible for a number to be negative or positive. In other words, whether the number needs to have a sign with it, signed, or whether it will only ever be positive and can therefore be represented without a sign, unsigned. Uh, and then additionally, they have right here, we have the I size and U size types depend on the kind of computer your program is running on. 64 bits if you're on a 64 bit architecture, 32 bit if you're on a 32 bit architecture. All right, so what they're saying here is that these are just based on your system and they are set, but they're set based on your system, either 64 bit or 32 bit. Most people are running 64 bit nowadays. 
you can you can write integer literals in any of the forms shown in table 3-2 this is 3-2 so we can write decimals like this we can write oh wow cool so 98.2222 that's kind of cool hex you can write it this way octal write it this way binary this way okay and byte u8 only we can write it that way so how do you know which size which type of integer to use if you're unsure rest defaults are generally good choices and integer types default to i32 this is this type is generally the fastest even on a 64-bit machine the primary situation in which you'd use i size or u size is when indexing some sort of collection Meh. Integer overflow, we can skip that. Let's go to floats. Rust also has two primary types of floating point numbers, which are numbers with decimal points. Rust floating point types are F32 and F64. And here's an example. So let's get rid of this and write this example real quick. So we have let x equal 2.0. Right, as you can see from my computer, it defaults to 64 bit and it is inferred. Now, if you want to let y define it, give it the type of f32 equals 3.0, we can. And now, this is a 32 bit floating point integer. Numeric operations, um, they look pretty standard. So we just write them out. We have let sum equal five plus 10. So that's addition, then we have subtraction. Let difference equal 95.5 minus 4.3. Which we see the type is going to be a 64 bit float. Uh, multiplication, let product equal 4 times 30. Have the type there. It is a sine 32 bit integer. And do another one for division. equal 56.7 divided by 32.2 and 64 bit float and then we have remainder which is modular arithmetic remainder equals 43 modulo 5 which is inferred as well and uh, we can see it's just regular regular math, nothing special there. We have Boolean types. Boolean. Write those out. We can say let t equal true. And we notice that is all lowercase in this language. And this is what the type looks like. It is not annotated there explicitly. That's the inferred IDE doing its job. But let's say false and we say it's going to be a boolean and we say it's going to equal false that's how you write it out explicitly another thing they go over are character types so so far we've worked only with numbers but rust supports letters too rust char type is the language's most primitive alphabetic type and the following code shows one way to use it um, so I don't know how to, oh, that's just lowercase z. Lowercase z is easier to write. Let c equal, and you can see it comes out as a char. Let z equal, I don't know how to write this Unicode character, so I'm just going to copy it. True, copy, make that a little bit higher. Paste. And that comes out as a string. That's not necessarily a char. Hmm. This makes sense. And then let 
heart add cat equal just gonna copy this portion char so oh single quotes maybe that's it yes if I put into single quotes it is a char but put into double quotes is seemingly a string pointer all right cool that's good to know that is very good to know I would have made a mistake so Rust char type represents a Unicode scalar value which means it can represent a lot more than just ASCII um, Unicode wide range Unicode is a big topic but just know that you can do special characters like this cat face and this Z and Chinese and Japanese all those character types 